uh, 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 can you the eight? What's going on with Louis Abram? What's what's going on with the visa there? Oh yeah, the the passport. They, they need to print the visa in his passport, and we're waiting for that. So we're, we're but, just waiting. But he's played before. How? Yeah, yeah. So he has a visa, but not printed. When he has to re-enter into the into the country, he has to have oh. that visa printed. So that's, that's what we're waiting. Um, Almada, I, I assume, is going to rejoin training Friday. I'm sorry, Almada will rejoin training Friday. Yes, yes, he's he's in town. He he's going to do a regen later, and uh, yeah, he's ready to to train for tomorrow. Any concerns about putting him in the starting lineup on Saturday? No, not at all. He's been good with Argentina. He played the first game. You saw that he scored a goal. We're all very happy about it. And then he didn't perform in the last in the last. He wasn't you know available for the last uh, match for them. But uh, he's fit. He's ready. And yeah. Amar said the, the goal is to play through Red Bull's press to some extent. Uh, frankly, why is my, my question there? Uh, it, it just, it's never worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, some ways it worked um, in certain games. Obviously, how we gave away goals against them mm -hmm. wasn't great. But, uh, but if I remember last year uh, in their field, we did a very good job. We were actually winning the game, and mm -hmm. we played through the pressure. So, so it worked mm -hmm. uh, in the past. And actually, I don't know how to tell my players mm -hmm. all the time, yes, have the ball, have the ball, have the ball. In just one game, I tell them, no, kick it long, and let's pray God for picking, <laughs> picking the second balls. And, and from there, we can create attack from nowhere or from chaotic environment. I, I'm not that type of mm -hmm. coach. I prefer to have something I have in control. If I can control the ball, I can control the game. That's my thought process. And yes, I know it's going to be a big challenge. Yes, it's one of the toughest opponents for this style. Yes, uh, they actually like, I, I assume, the way we play. That's that's what suits them. But it's the same for us. Is is can we be that good? And and that's what is on the line. Learning lessons from that game in New York last year that you can apply to, to this one. Well, I I, I think uh, if you watch even the last game. The, the goals you concede against them can be soft, can cannot be soft goals because they are going to take them. You know, the last goal they scored like it was a soft goal, and uh, and the last two we conceded in their stadium. The one I, I remember were soft goals, like like goals that we shouldn't concede. So it's a team that, especially in the beginning of the of the game, they want to put a lot of energy into it. Well, the whole match, but especially in the first couple uh, 20, 30 minutes. So if they can get a, a goal, they have that mental advantage. Now they are more comfortable with their game style. But if we can hurt them first and be the, the ones that are more proactive in that, then they have to open up a little bit more, maybe change a little bit the, the focus of their style. And, and that's that's the, the main plan. With Gutman's injury, likely Wiley will move back to left fullback? Yeah, maybe. We have Aiden as well. We have Ronald in that position. So so we're checking, especially Ronald, is, is, is he you know good to go? Um, you know, Aiden has been training as a left back, so, so we'll see the options we have. And the other guys that uh, were out on international break, they all came back, they're all healthy, no worries, no... Yes, everyone, I mean, today, Derek trained, partial, uh, Chop trained full today, um, Ronald trained partial, uh, Thiago will do his region later here in the training facility, so basically the only one we are missing at the moment is Abram, but we're hopeful that we can get him for the game. We it's saw intense. Ozzy on Tuesday doing a lot of uh, quick quick lateral movements and sprinting and stuff. Is he scheduled to rejoin the team next week or the week after? Who, I'm sorry? Ozzy. Ozzy. Well, uh, don't know yet. The, the timeline, again, I know you, you want to know that, but uh, still is week by week. Maybe uh, it's closer every time you see him. He's doing something new, something better. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks even stronger. I was with him in the gym just a few minutes ago, and he looks he looks better. So, yeah, everybody sees, like, hey, maybe he's closer. We'll see. There are a couple of things that he needs to hit in order to make sure that when he's back, he's healthy, and he sustains that. Uh, health throughout the whole season, like Miles, like uh, uh, like a Brad, that they were able to come back and be strong and, and sustain that that health uh, problem throughout the season. So to reflect back on the Columbus result, you know it's easy for us in the media or fans to kind of explain explain the result away because you're missing Tiago, you're missing Miles, you're missing Derek, you know you're missing all these players. Um, but I, you know the I assume the message obviously is different 
internally from the coaches and the players. So how, how, just how do you process that when you have these legitimate circumstances facing you in the game, um, but the result obviously goes the way it did? Yes, I, I don't like to use excuses, especially in front of my players. So maybe outside here and there we know, right? Maybe as coaches we say, yeah, we're missing a little bit of this from Tiago, a little bit of this from Yaku, a little bit of this. Even the options from the bench, you know, we have uh, good options that went out with the international window. But that's that's maybe a, a very, how to say, a very soft uh, analysis from my side. What I told them is, is, is it wasn't good enough in some ways, and I'm okay with losing some games. Like that's going to happen. That's part of the game. What I'm not okay is losing in that way. And uh, we all agree. We all took responsibility. We as coaches, we took responsibility. The tactics, the preparation for that game was that good enough to prepare young group to face that type of challenge. Tactically, uh, uh, Columbus did a great job, and maybe we were not completely uh, understanding what I tried to do in that game, and that's maybe my fault. So we take responsibility in every way, the same they did on certain actions and how we can manage that. So we never took excuses of missing players. Uh, once we start to watch the film and that, it was all about the players available, and we all took accountability on that. And, and that's, I think, is a very mature process to have in place. Coach, la, la semana pasada hablábamos lo difícil que es jugar en Columbus. Eh, ¿Cómo puedes explicar lo que pasó el sábado? ¿Qué tanto afectó las ausencias de estos jugadores titulares en ese partido? Bueno, lo decía un poquito, ¿no? Que evidentemente es un es un eh, Es, es lógico que, que pierde ciertas cosas, ciertas eh, situaciones de juego que capaz que, que los jugadores que se fueron eh, las, las resuelven a veces eh, solos. ¿no? Eh, eh, que, ¿Cómo explicarlo? Bueno, que, que capaz que cometimos errores eh, individuales, errores colectivos, eh, no subimos a ajustarnos en ciertos momentos del partido. Creo que el primer tiempo ellos si bien tuvieron la pelota tampoco es que tuvieron jugadas claras de gol. Eh, fue el gol en un rebote, una especie de, 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 de roce de, de, de un centro por abajo que, que fácilmente podía cortar Santi. Desafortunadamente el, el, el efecto va a favor de ellos, cae la pelota en medio del área y, y la anotan. Eh, después de eso no hubo mucho peligro y te encuentras con una situación donde no tuve manera de ajustar en el segundo tiempo por la lesión de Andrew, que era capaz que una solución que podemos haber darlo es cambiar la, la estructura del equipo y ya no tenía ese revulsivo. Este, y e inmediatamente en el segundo tiempo comienzas recibiendo dos goles y eso que creo que mentalmente le impactó al equipo y, 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 y al final parte de la reflexión es esa, ¿no? que no supimos en ese momento decir ok, no fue nuestro día, vamos a tratar de cerrar esto y no, 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 no dar más goles ¿no? Y, y no lo supimos hacer y creo que eso es responsabilidad de todos y nada, ya está, está en el pasado y ahora a lo que sigue que es, que es el siguiente partido contra Red Bulls. Ese partido contra Red Bulls el sábado ya están todos los jugadores regresaron. Entiendo que Tiago llegó esta mañana de, de Argentina. Eh, ¿Será de la partida el, el, el sábado y, y, y cómo enfrentar a, a un Red Bull que siempre aprieta, que es un equipo que, que, que es fuerte, sobre todo en la, la media cancha? Sí, eh, sabemos del estilo de Red Bulls, es un estilo muy particular. Eh, saben exactamente los, como se dice en inglés, los triggers para poder apretar en qué momentos. Entonces, estamos preparando. Obviamente con nuestro estilo, tratar de, de, de poderlo superar en esa presión alta y ese es el juego, ¿no? Siempre creo que es así, es el que tiene la pelota, cómo hace para romper al rival y el que no la tiene, cómo hace para quitar el balón y poder atacar. Entonces, eh, para nosotros es muy básico en ese sentido el cómo hacerlo contra un equipo que aprieta tan agresivamente como lo hace Red Bulls. Es, es importante y tenemos que tomarlo en consideración. ¿Cómo es el momento de Tiago? Está haciendo bien las cosas en el equipo, puede jugar con la selección, jugó 45 minutos, anotó gol, espectacular. En tus propias palabras, ¿cómo lo defines? No, muy bien, está pasando un gran momento. La idea de nosotros es ayudarle a, a que continúe con ese momento y que siga, que siga priorizando el equipo, ¿no? que, que dentro de ese priorizar el equipo es que él desarrolle su talento y que, y que haga lo que tiene que ser dentro de la cancha. Creo que lo está haciendo muy bien, creo que está teniendo muy buenas actitudes, muy buenos comportamientos dentro y fuera de la cancha y eso nos pone muy contentos porque creemos que esa es la manera de sostener el, la forma que, que está teniendo en el equipo. Viene el Final Four, I'm sorry, Gana, go ahead. my last question. Gana, you're good. Viene el Final Four, está México y Estados Unidos. ¿Cómo ves esos cuartos de final o esa cuadrangular entre eh, Estados Unidos, México, Canadá y Panamá? 
pues vamos México, ¿no? Es, ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? Apoyando. No sé qué más decir, creo que los dos equipos están pasando una situación similar, ¿no? Después de, de quedarse un poco sin, sin el líder que, 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 que tuvieron los dos equipos, especialmente Estados Unidos y, y México, Greg Berharter por un lado, eh, saliendo quizás, digo, creo que no sabemos si, si vaya a regresar o no, y después Tata Martino que, que sale del equipo, ahora ya llega, digo, Coca tiene muy poco tiempo de trabajo, muchas críticas del lado de México hacia hacia los resultados y, y las formas como ha, ha jugado la selección estos primeros dos partidos, eh, pero creo que los dos están con cierta incertidumbre ¿no? de, de qué depara. Y pues lo único que a mí me queda desde acá es apoyar a mi país, apoyar a México, darle la confianza a los jugadores, que, que se sacudan todas las, las arañas de la cabeza y todo lo que de repente se dice en redes sociales, en la prensa, creo que es demasiado y a veces creo que el jugador tiene que, que dejar eso un poquito de lado, no preocuparse por, por, por las situaciones externas y simplemente hacer su juego. Creo que tenemos grandes jugadores y creo que si, si nos entendemos entre nosotros en la manera en que sentimos el juego los mexicanos, creo que, creo que podemos dar buenos resultados, pero que, 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 que dejemos de enfocarnos tanto en la prensa o en las redes sociales, creo que, creo que no nos va a llevar a nada enfocarnos en eso y, y simplemente trabajar. Y creo que el cuerpo técnico Diego Coca ha demostrado que es un grupo trabajador y los futbolistas les deseo lo mejor. Con ese análisis eh, le da la ventaja a Canadá, porque llega con una... Proceso, más continuidad, Estados más continuidad. Sí, más continuidad, pero bueno, eh, pues estos partidos son así y simplemente desean lo mejor a México. Coach, to follow up on what Joe had talked about, the players not being here, you're not going to run into that possibility a lot this year, but there will be times that some of these guys will be out. And Amar did say that maybe this was good that it happened early. Did that give you an opportunity to see guys that could step up and fill those roles maybe, or guys that may need to work on filling some of those you know, key roles? For sure, actually. That's part of life, right? Everything that happens to you at times, things that you don't like are opportunities to learn. And this was a great opportunity for us to learn early in the season, maybe how to approach this type of games, this type of windows without a lot of players, how we can plan better the, the type of game we want to play. And yeah, it's a good lesson for me as a coach personally, and I hope for the players the same. How did Cobb and Lopez look? Good. I, I think he's getting back. Again, I think he didn't do the The, the preseason for me is important that they have multiple weeks within the team so they are used to the intensity we want to play on and off the ball, the, the type of tactics we use, how we try to create spaces for others and all that. So, so it's unfair to judge him at the moment because it's been just a few weeks with us. So uh, I expect him to get more and more uh, within the system so then we can judge him in, in, in future games. And Cobb, I know y'all gave up six goals, but... Yes, I mean, it's, it's a tough lesson for the kid. I think I don't think he particularly had a, a really bad game. I think it was just tough because of the amount of pressure he was receiving and, and many times he was exposing some crosses that were difficult to defend. But I think it's a good lesson for the kid as well. We, we think that he's very strong mentally and he's going to overcome these type of games where his first game in MLS, he the team concedes six goals and right. then he take it personal because he's the center back. So uh, we, we have a lot of confidence and belief in Noah. And you've talked about a few times in the preseason, you were happy that the players were able to see something during a, a game and make the adjustments. Against Columbus, was what they were doing just, was it overly complicated or did they just not recognize it or just couldn't make the adjustments? Yeah, we couldn't. Uh, I felt like we couldn't and, and that's a reflection I have. Like we prepare certain tactics we didn't really do it the moments we did i think it worked we regained the ball a couple times mm -hmm. but then we were not uh, fast enough or clinical enough in the counters we had a few counter move counter uh, plays where we didn't connect the ball like the one miguel berry delays mm -hmm. a bit and, and then luis is in offside those normally if you score that one then the game starts to be more on your side so we didn't have that that we have maybe in charlotte right we, we had a couple moments in transition we scored the goal and then it's a different game so um yeah, again uh, To, to analyze a full game, you have to analyze the moments of the game and what's happening, what's the situation, what's the status of the game. So if we score one of those transition moments, the game is completely different. And maybe even the mentality of the team is different and we can adjust different. And, and that, that's what we couldn't identify, those solutions in that moment. Did you get the reaction, the response? I will continue. Oh, yeah. Did you get the reaction, the response from the team on the training pitch this week? Yes, very good question. Because we talk in the film, a big part of the film was was 
it's not about what happened on Saturday. It's about the reaction now because that's in the past. We cannot uh, score any more goals on, on Columbus and make it uh, a bit closer and then come back in the game. That's, that's over. So what we can do is now uh, recoup from that hit and and the reaction in the first training session has to be good. And that's what I got. The team was back to who we are. That was the theme of the week. Let's come back to who we are, who we are as a team. We're an intense team. We're a team that wants to regain the ball as, high as, po as soon as possible, as high as possible. We're a team that likes possession. We are a team that likes good counterattacks in the moments that, that we are under pressure. We are a team that creates a lot of chances. That's the type of team we are. So. We came back to that, and, and I'm very happy for that reaction. To, to go to something that Sam was kind of, we were talking kind of around the edges of it earlier. I'm just kind of curious just to get your general thoughts on the way that Red Bulls play and whether you think that that kind of style is suited to play a team like Atlanta United traditionally that wants to keep the ball. Yes, I agree. It's just, it's just at the same time, I would say that that suits also us. Uh, that's okay. how I philosophically think the game. The more the opponent wants to press, the, the more space is in behind. So in some ways, I want to attract that pressure normally. That's, that's part of the process of us is attracting the pressure so then there are gaps. What they do very well is to maintain the compactness in that pressure so then it's difficult to find the gaps that they leave. So it's, that's, that's the, their style. But I would say that it also suits us in some ways. So that's a battle. Who does better his style? Who, who applies better in certain situations? Who's clinical in those moments? Because if we break them down at some point and then we don't, we don't score, or we don't hit them or punish their pressure, and then they, they have some momentum and then they punish us in one of those transition moments, that's the difference at times. That application and that being clinical in those key moments of the game. Uh, but for me, the style we try to play is a good one and I don't think we're going to modify that massively regardless of the opponent. Is Mateus fit to start? He, he is available for selection. Understood. Yes. Understood. <laughs> uh, Mars talked multiple times and people talked about about creating overloads against the Red Bulls press. How exactly do you do that? Well, uh, putting one more player in certain areas, <laughs> yeah. but no, okay. Yeah. So, yes, uh, I think like using basically what we try to do is using their pressure against them a little bit. So, so how, how we're able to attract more of the players on one side or in one area of the field, and then either it's a vertical breaking line pass. Mm -hmm. Uh, that can get the player in behind free, but after that we know that they're going to come with everything in those in those moments. So using that, through that, getting the overload in behind after that. Mm -hmm. So it's continuously moving, but for me the main thing is the shorter the pass the better in this game. The shorter the pass the better, because they have certain triggers that, that are very good in, in their style. So. Um, I cannot give you more detail because that's that's the tactics of the game. But but yeah, he's creating certain movements and certain positioning on the flow of the game, trying to be fluid on the movement, especially in the middle, uh, trying to create that that type of doubts in their pressure. So then they attract, we attract them more, and then from there we can have a space in another part of the field. Is that clear enough? Yes. Okay. Um, no sé si alguna actualidad de de Goodman, si, 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 si he, he, he's better. Uh, I mean, the, the the good news is that it wasn't a, a really bad injury. Ah, perdón, perdón. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, the, uh, la buena noticia es que no, no fue una lesión muy grave. Es, eh, es, eh, hoy entrenó en cancha. Hoy hizo cancha ya, hoy ya corrió. Eh, buena noticia. Capaz que la próxima semana se recupera, eh, se reintegra el equipo. Eh, vamos a ver cómo evoluciona, pero no es una lesión que lo mantendrá muy, mucho tiempo alejado de las canchas. Definitivamente no va a este fin de semana. No, no, va a estar fuera. Sí. Gracias. So, en inglés, good money is out. <laughs> okay. Eso. Okay.